front side is bigger. I love hackathons. I love everything about them. Just the energy in the air, uh, the creativity. The you can just you can just smell it in the air. Uh, so I um, yeah, I also was super excited to be in Denver and for us to launch thing with functions here. Uh, it's, a, it's been a long time coming, and we we thought what better place to launch it than at the best hackathon. So yeah, um, I uh, a background on chaining functions. I started in the it, working on smart contracts in about 2014, uh, and it was very obvious then at that point that, that to build any useful smart contracts, you would need um, you need oracles. And so we went through a long iterative process of trying first an oracle service, then a, an open source oracle, and eventually landed on a uh, incentivized decentralized oracle network. So that's where we, we got to Chainlink. And in 2017, we launched the project Chainlink. Uh, it, we built. Uh, in the job, in the Chainlink node, there's a single job type. It's called the direct request. And the direct request is a way for a contract to talk to a single Chainlink node. And uh, the idea was at the time you could transparently on chain do aggregation. Uh, to give you a picture, this was back in like 2017 or at, at this time. Um, it was, you, you could, there was no gas market. There was people were just giving, paying 20 guay for the sake of, you know, we wanted miners to make a little money, we weren't really sure what was gonna happen. So to, to have aggregation on chain was a perfectly acceptable thing to do, and if anything, more transparent. Uh, and so you could send off a request, have a have a, a chain link node run through a series of Docker containers to, to process work, and then report the, the, the result back on chain. So for us, uh, we when we went to 2019, we went to mainnet, we had the launch, and at the time we said, how do we show this off? What, do we, what is the way to do it? We launched, uh, we built an application, we built a price feed off of it. And we launched ETHUSD at the time, three, three different Chainlink nodes validating, and uh, fast, fast forward to, to um, 2020, like summer 2020, DeFi summer, you know, Black Thursday has, has happened, gas prices are through the roof, consistently at 200 guay at least, and we are we're now struggling to, to with on-chain validation. Uh, so at that point, we decided we need to build off-chain reporting. We moved this stuff off-chain. We recognized that users did not want to uh, actually have to um, yeah, have to do their their building the contract validation, the aggregation on-chain, or pay for those gas costs. So this is a big a big win for us to move that forward. Um, but at the same time, as we we built it, at, for me personally, it was always frustrating. Everyone's using. Um, well, not frustrating, but I love that uh, the, the aggregators took off and they became super valuable for, um, for DeFi. They powered DeFi. We loved seeing that happen. Um, but for me, I was always, it became our, uh, our flagship product, but I was always a little frustrated because as a developer, it was not as, as flexible as something like the direct request. I wanted to be able to reach out to all kinds of APIs, pull anything on chain, not have to worry about aggregating back on chain. So uh, we'd go to hackathons, we'd see everybody be built with this direct request model, and yet yeah, nobody took that to production. The thing that was powering DeFi were these feeds. So fast forward again to 2022, uh, we had an internal hackathon. Uh, Morgan, shout out to Morgan somewhere here, actually built, won the internal hackathon with the universal adapter, which kind of reimagined the, the pain point that most people at the hackathon had been facing, which is to ship that code to the actual node operators. And once you get past the OCR point, you get to, you get to give them the, uh, the, the JavaScript or giving them the code to execute. We were really excited to get that. Uh, that, that was a catalyst that kicked off us reimagining. Uh, we could just sense the hunger for this better request model. Developers were really excited to have it in their hands, but we are excited to, to take it and get it out here. And in, um, in true hackathon style, we're trying to ship it early. Uh, it's, not, it's not perfect, it's, it's beta, so we, we want you to give, try it out, uh, give us your feedback, all that. Um, but with that, I'm gonna hand it back to Brian to show you what this thing actually does. Uh, I am uh, having Steve here tell you that story uh, is really special because this is a big milestone. Milestone for Web3, milestone for Chainlink. Uh, and there's only a founder that can tell you that impassioned story. So it's, it's awesome. Thank you, Steve. So in a little bit, I'm also going to invite a friend, Alan Day, with Google to show what you can do with uh, you know, Chainlink functions and Web2 data. 
Uh, I ask right now for you guys, we're going to have you try this demo real quick while we're speaking. And what we're going to do is show you the power of Web2 data, chain link functions, and blockchain working together within real life uh, behavior. So I think you'll see this is one of the first times this kind of thing has ever been done before. Uh, it's going to go to charity. It's going to be awesome. So stay tuned. So Web3 is a promise that we've all been talking about. We all are here, but please, we believe this is a big opportunity. Uh, you know, a couple years ago, price data came to the blockchain and DeFi emerged. DeFi is undeniable, DeFi is huge, DeFi is unstoppable. So we at Chainlink are thinking, if you can do that with just price data, what can you unlock, what can developers unlock when you have any data and all the data, the internet's data, come to the blockchain? That's gonna happen through builders like you. You guys are gonna be the revolutionaries that create the new use cases that power the next versions of Web3. We're here launching this at ETH Denver for a reason. Builders like yourselves are the ones that are going to be forging the path forward. But you guys have been telling us over and over, there's a big limitation to Web3 still. We can get price data, we can get other data, but we still have this blocker. We can't deliver on some of these awesome use cases that we've been imagining because the rest of the data that we have is still untouchable. Data I'm talking about, you know, public cloud, private cloud, public APIs, private APIs, cloud services, you know, Spotify data, Twilio data, you name it. Your backend services, public backend services, these are things that the internet takes for granted, but we still have this limitation of no access. This is what we're changing. What gets me very excited is there are 30,000 passionate developers building on Web3 today. But you guys still have this blocker, but you're still here. There are 30 million developers on the sideline in the Web2 space that have no idea how they can leverage their stack and the blockchain today. This together is how we're going to grow the ecosystem. This is how we massively expand the Web3 developer ecosystem. Now, I'm preaching to the choir. You guys have heard this. 80% of all of our hackathon developers worldwide try to use Web2 data using any API, exactly what Steve was talking about. We've seen this, we know the signal is undeniable. So it's time we do something about it. Any API has lots of pain points, lots of failures, but a lot of potential. And so what we are doing is we're building a new developer first platform that removes all of those pain points for you. So what you have to do is just focus on what you're building, on the code, take out everything else, all the layers, of uh, you know, infrastructure, coordination, decentralization, and embed that straight into the team network. You've been asking for it, obviously, we've been listening. It's all about getting us to this point. So as you know, we launched Chainlink Functions this week in beta. We're very excited. It is a serverless platform for Web3. This is Web3 serverless moment. And if you look back at what happened on the internet when such a thing happened, innovation took off. And that's why we're really excited for us. Chainlink Functions, as I said, is any data, any device, and any system on chain. So that's wildly extensible connectivity, customizable compute in your hands, done in a trust-minimized way, a runtime that you can uh, leverage, and it's self-service, you can code, deploy, and start using in minutes. This is the most important piece. It runs on Chainlink's existing time-trusted network. So the same infrastructure that runs price feeds, VRF, keepers, the rest of what you take for granted this is the same infrastructure that's powering functions. Battle-tested, decentralized, and blockchain agnostic is the vision. That's where we're headed. So it's still early, but the three things that you should take away is it's how it's powerfully simple is you can fetch any data, you can run any compute, and then you can return your value, your customer's value, your smart contractor's value, whatever you need on the chain. This is what we have today. You can imagine what we're excited about coming out with in the next one or two years. So we've been building with alpha users. 
We are building for startups, we're building for early stage, uh, hackathon users, big brands, you name it. This is a platform for everyone. So we looked at some of the biggest players in Web2, we looked at the most hungry developers in Web3, and we've been building around you guys in Alpha this week, taking that to beta. I'm excited to bring on Alan Day um, from Google. He's one of the Alpha partners that's been building. I'll have to you. Thanks, Brian. Hey, everybody. Wow, it's really, really exciting to be here. This is, this is very cool to see more uh, hybrid Web2, Web3 applications. So I'm going to show you something today. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a developer relations uh, engineer from Google Cloud on the Web3 team. And I'm going to show you today uh, a demo that we built in a hackathon style. You saw the URL earlier, so if you haven't been there already, uh, you should go visit. It's doggercat.xyz. Uh, some Google marketing uh, platform product that's going to be showcased today is Google Analytics. So for those of you who aren't aware, uh, that, that figure that Brian referenced earlier about the 30 million devs, many of them are using this as a go-to um, uh, logging service. It's a software as a service that runs on Google servers, and it's used for generating general statistics and also tracking what users are doing on a, a website that you own for SEO purposes and optimization purposes for e-commerce. So figuring out like who visited a particular web page, where did they come from, how many things were in the shopping cart, did it get abandoned, et cetera. Uh, I'm also gonna be showcasing a Google Cloud Platform product called BigQuery. This is one of our, our most amazing products uh, and it's essentially an enterprise data warehouse, very scalable, you query with ANSI SQL, and uh, we, we will, uh, it's, it's connected to Google Analytics. So Google Analytics exports data there. And I'll come back to that in a moment. Okay, so this is kind of the general flow. I'll get into a more detailed architecture diagram in a moment. But we basically have Google Analytics uh, on that Dogger Cat website. It's being streamed into BigQuery. So there's about a second of latency there. And then Chainlink is pulling data out of BigQuery and writing it onto the blockchain. Now, as another note, um, this is out of scope for today, but we are also indexing Ethereum data back into BigQuery. So this is something we've been doing. This project I started about five years ago. It's running in near real time. And this means we could actually have some feedback loops of interaction between the, the web application and the blockchain. If you search for Google Cloud Ethereum data, you would, you would find what I'm talking about. Go to town. Okay, here's the reference architecture for what we're showing today. Website has two buttons. Some of you saw it already. There's some tagging on the landing pages. One's a dog and one's a cat. So we keep track of where the user went. Goes to Google Analytics, which streams out to BigQuery. And then there's a chain link automation. It's basically a cron job that tells this contract, hey, get the votes. And that calls the chain link function to pull the data from BigQuery over the Oracle network, bring the data back in. And then we're receiving the votes. So they're being injected into the contract and updating the state. And then once this is all over, we will declare a winner of the, con the contest between who won dogs or cats. And then we're going to give some money to charity. Uh, a dog care, uh, if it's more dogs or more cats, they'll receive, I understand it's $2,000. And if it's uh, the other one, gets the, the, the lesser doesn't get zero, they get $1,000. So please, please vote for your favorite. OK, here it is again. If you want to vote, please. OK, good. Got a couple more scans. Thank you. Uh, I did this earlier. I wasn't sure how the Wi-Fi would be on a live demo, so it looked like this. You click one, and of course, I vote for cats. I'm a cat fan. Talk to me about cats later. I can, I can do cat Q&A. <laughs> uh, okay, so now let's take a look. We're going to jump out of here and go to live data, hopefully. Let's see. Reports real time. And reports. Real time. Okay. So yeah, I see some of you are coming in. And you can see there's basically, uh, you know, I guess roaming, or I don't know exactly what that is. But a bunch of us are in Colorado on the Wi-Fi, obviously. And these are the dog votes. And then there's some cat votes in this, in this tab over here. So yeah, it's all working, right? And then let me get back. Okay, so that was that. And then, where am I? Yeah. Okay, and then we can then take a look at the contract inspector. So this was linked on the page if you want to look at the data yourself, but here it is on Polygon Scan. This is the smart contract that we're engaging with. And if I reload, we can see with the, some latency, okay, so 37 cat votes have come in as of about a minute ago, and 52 dog votes. Go dogs. 
And the charity winner is not yet populated because the declare winner function hasn't been called. So cats, there's still time. We're still in the game. All right, so that's that. And here is a blog post that we published a couple of days ago. So it describes the use case. There's some gists of the code. The really fantastic thing about this, I was just blown away by how streamlined this was. It's about 50 lines of code, 48 of which are boilerplate. One line is the bearer token, so you can log into Google Analytics, because not anybody can look at that page, right? It's a permission page for the owner of the website, so there's a bearer token. The other one is a SQL query. Everything else is just like plumbing logic. So if you wanted to build something like this, you change the query, you change your auth, go to town. Um, so yeah, pretty, pretty awesome how easy it was, and I'm gonna hand back to Brian now. Thanks so much. All right, guys, you get the idea. A lighthearted demo like that, using powerful technology inside of Chainlink's decentralized network, is going to unleash the local community. It's up to you guys to show us what's possible.